And a welcome to the Tuesday, June 11th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Neptune, New Jersey. Xavier today took a look at an interesting obfuscated JavaScript that one of our readers submitted. Interesting because in this particular case, a phishing site included a data URL that essentially encoded an entire malicious Word document within the Base64 stream following the data URL. Data URLs are sort of interesting because they usually evade further detection and automatic analysis by anti-malware. They're sort of treated just like harmless HTML code, but once the user clicks on the particular link, the URL is decoded and the user is then being offered to download the included malicious Word document. And Bridge Security site, my online security, is bringing us an interesting combination of DNS techniques that are being used in order to create malicious or at least spammy web pages. The trick here is that once the user visits the HTML web page, JavaScript within the page is used to resolve certain text records, DNS text records, that are then returning the actual content of the page. So the page itself is static. It just uses JavaScript in order to keep itself updated. Now, this could, of course, just be accomplished by using JavaScript to use uh, methods like fetch or XMLHP request in order to download HTML snippets from another website, but that may be a little bit too obvious and too easy to spot. So instead, this attacker opted in for DNS. Now, I'm not a JavaScript expert by any means, but I don't think JavaScript has a simple DNS uh, resolver library. So in order to look up these text records, the attacker actually used Google's DNS over HTTPS service. Google offers and uh, actually other DNS over HTTPS services do that as well. They offer a simple JSON interface in order to look up arbitrary DNS records. So this malware just sends an HTTPS request to Google's resolver and then retrieves a nicely formed JSON object that includes the value for the text records, which is essentially the spam message being included in the web page. So pretty interesting trick here. And of course, now outbound requests to Google are not usually something that you would consider malicious since it's HTTPS. You won't really see the content of these messages other than the fact that it's going to Google. And the attacker is very easily able to then dynamically change these DNS records and with that, the content being sent back to the user. Apparently, right now, only UK IP addresses are being targeted by this particular malicious site. And late last week, Swiss hosting company Safehost advertised a number of IP prefixes belonging to European mobile network operators as being part of their network. Now, this would have been kind of the end of the story because Typically, these days, responsible ISPs don't necessarily just forward any large announcements like this from their peers. But apparently, in 2017, Safehost started a peering agreement with China Telecom. And China Telecom apparently has not yet implemented a lot of sort of these standard security features preventing the propagation of bad routing information like this. The result was that many any routes that were belonging to these European mobile operators were now routed to Safehost via China Telecom. At this point, it's not really clear what sort of caused this mishap to happen, whether it was intentional or accidental. Safehost did publish a brief tweet just stating that they're not aware of any configuration changes to their equipment. So they're kind of blaming it a little bit on their routers. Uh, but of course, uh, that usually doesn't just happen. And they state that they're still investigating with their hardware supplier. 
And last year, the European Commission announced that it is funding bug bounty rewards for a number of open source projects. Now, one of the open source projects that profited from this effort is VLC or Videolan, very popular video player. And VLC just released version 307, which they're calling a minor update, but it is thanks to the bug bounty program, the release with the highest number of security issues that are being addressed. 33 total security issues are being fixed in this particular release. Two of them are high security issues. And actually one of these high security ones is not in VLC itself, but in the FAT2 library which according to the blog post accompanying this release is sadly unmaintained but got fixed at least now for VLC. Nothing easily exploitable here but you probably still should go ahead and update VLC if you are using it. Well and that's it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.